This is the first generation 11 inch iPad Pro from 2018 and it's six years old and it's still just fast as hell. It still feels like a brand new device. It's crazy. It's just very minimalistic. It's sleek, it's beautiful. The display quality is freaking awesome. It has a ProMotion display with 120 Hertz variable refresh rate. The display also supports the P3 wide color gamut. So the colors just look really natural and really good on this. I love watching videos and creating stuff on this. It's that perfect size between an iPhone and a giant iPad. It's still pretty big, but it's not like the 12.9 inch version, which for me, it's kind of hard to hold. It's a little too heavy and my fingers get sore like instantly. But the 11 inch, I think it's the perfect sweet spot where it's not too small, but it's not too big. It has the same display as the most recent iPad. So if you're wanting to get a better display or the mini LED display, you're gonna have to get a 12.9 inch iPad Pro because the 11 inch one still doesn't have mini LED. It still doesn't do that hyper HDR thing where things get brighter and darker. If this 11 inch iPad Pro got that mini LED screen on the 12.9 inch display, I honestly think I would finally upgrade the 2018 iPad Pro to a newer model. And the display itself, it's got fingerprints everywhere on it, but it doesn't scratch easily at all. I don't use a screen protector on this thing. I do use a case, which is like the Apple magnet case thing, the smart cover. But most of the time I'm just using it like this, not even with the Apple Pencil, which it does support Apple Pencil too. It's a little hard to see. There are a couple like very small scratches on the screen. You probably can't see them. I can see them if I tilt the iPad in a certain way, but when I'm actually using my iPad, it doesn't show up at all. Like I just look at a normal screen with no scratches. And the performance is just top notch. Like I really don't see any reason to upgrade to get a faster processor on this. But I mean, you can see how responsive this thing is. And I'm running the latest version of iPad OS, I think 17.4 beta, and it is smooth as hell. It feels just buttery. Once in a while, you do have to wait a little bit for stuff to load, but it's like half a second or a second maybe. But if you play a lot of games on your iPad, I would probably recommend actually getting a more recent iPad, at least the M1 one, because this one does slow down a little bit when I'm playing games. Like not so much lost frames and a lot of jitteriness. There is a little bit of that once in a while, but for the most part, it's super smooth. And because this display is so gorgeous, like things just look really nice and they feel really nice on here. Super responsive with the Apple Pencil as well. Like you can see just scrolling up and down, I mean, I'm not making this up. This iPad is incredible. <laughs> I would say the biggest concerns I have with this iPad, well, there's two of them. One of them is battery life. So it does get pretty decent battery life. I can usually go, you know, maybe three or four hours on a full charge. I don't use it like consecutively for that long anyway. So I usually just charge it maybe every other day with normal use and it's totally fine. But if you're like a high-end gamer or you're using this for graphics all day or something, you're probably gonna want a newer device, maybe even a refurbished model where they actually put a new battery in one of these things because the processors, I believe this one has the A12X Bionic. This one is really, really fast, but it's not as efficient as the newer processors that are meant to be more efficient with like the M1 and M2 processors. But if you're like me and you just kind of pick it up to watch a video here and there or reply to some text messages, check social media real quick or whatever, this to me is like the perfect iPad. But the second main concern I have with this iPad is how long this thing is gonna be supported by new iPad OS development. Usually Apple only supports its devices for like five to six years. Will it get iPad OS 18? We shall see. I kind of doubt it, but that would be incredible. But the thing to consider with that is again, with the battery life, if you're running those newer versions of iPad OS, which are more optimized for the newer chips, these older models just won't perform as well. There's actually a third big downfall on this iPad Pro and it's the cameras. They're really not that good, y'all. They get the job done for the most part, but if you're wanting super crisp, not grainy, photos like on an iPhone, you're just not gonna get them from this unless you're in like really bright sunlight. And even then the photos look a little bit dated by today's standards. But there is a really cool thing that I've noticed with this, I might make a whole video about this, where when you use Adobe Lightroom and the cameras inside Lightroom and you shoot like a raw image using this iPad Pro, for whatever reason, it ends up looking like a film photo. So if you're into like film photo emulation or trying to get your photos to look retro or vintage or whatever, this does it out of the box because 
it has that older sensor, which I believe is a 12 megapixel sensor in the one camera that it has up here. Again, not the crispest, most modern looking photos, but they look kind of retro in kind of a cool way, especially if you use the flash, which this does have. But I also kind of like using technology for as long as possible and not just replacing it every year for no reason. The iPhone being the exception to that because it's just fascinating to me. But let me know in the comments, are you still using the 2018 iPad Pro in 2024? And if you watched all the way to the end of this video, leave a pizza emoji in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, smash all the buttons, and I will see y'all in the next video.